Aloha and welcome to Maui Mana'o, coming to you live from across the island of Maui on Olelo and Okaku and around the world on the internet. Today we have Senators Jay Kalani English, Senator Gil Keith Agaron, and Senator Roz Baker. They're all back on Maui now after we were just in session for two weeks. Uh, we passed a number of uh, capital improvement projects and passed a number of nominations and some emergency budget bills. Senator, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what we what happened last week? Let's go with the majority leader. <laughs> okay, I was hoping that the vice chair of Ways and Means would <laughs> talk about it. Um, well, you know, we, we had to go back in uh, to really deal with a huge uh, budgetary shortfall of about a billion dollars and um, reconcile the amount of money we actually have with the expenses that um, that are needed to operate government. And so part of the, the job was to see, you know, how we can find the monies to fund the, the essential core services. And uh, we had to make some really hard choices. For example, you know, early on, we couldn't fund any of the grant and aids that were, were requested this year. And it's, you know, very hard, but, you know, we have to do that. Um, so that was the, the main reason for going back. We also had, had to allocate the federal monies that were coming in. Um, so for Maui County, you know, we passed through $66.6 million. And it's a very unusual uh, type of pass-through because the federal government basically gave authority to the mayors in consultation with the councils, but not having to appropriate it through the councils to get monies out very, very quickly. Um, one of their caveats, the federal government's caveats, is that the money has to be spent, not encumbered, but spent by December 31st. Um, you know, which means that the, the mayor and Maui County has to figure out very quickly programs. And some of the good programs that they've been doing, you know, the, the buying from farmers that need to sell their product and then redistributing the food in, the, in all the districts, uh, on Molokai, Lanai, Upcountry, Wailuku, Lahaina, Kihei, Hana, um, those projects will continue, and, and the county has done a, an outstanding job of that. And then, you know, some some other things. Uh, one of the county employees, uh, you know, suggested on Facebook that uh, the that they spend this money on broadband, and we agree. You know, so the mayor and the county, you know, that that's the time to improve the broadband because this is directly related to COVID. It would help then uh, the schools that need access, um, the remote areas, but also, you know, the areas, uh, I would say the areas in limbo where we have, you know, I, I'm right now at a place in Peahi in Haiku, and it has, you know, minimal nominal broadband. Um, Hawaiian Tel provides a broadband here, so does Spectrum, but all of it is very nominal. So we cannot, most of the day, I could not go on most of the meetings because it would drop. And if I get a phone call, it would drop my, um, my you know, online. So Hawaiian Tel fixed the, the, the connectivity in this area. <laughs> and uh, uh, to support your cause, yeah, we, can, we can hear you fine, but your picture is occasionally freezing. But uh, So it's amazing we can connect live from Piahe, but we yeah. can see that you need more broadband. Right. So, this, you know, that's part of the monies that can be spent by the county. Um, we also received, I, I think the city and county of Honolulu got a different type of allotment, about $380 million. Um, we had to allocate that to them. Uh, Hawaii County, I think was $28 million. Correct me on the numbers, Gil, I think. Anyway, those, you know, that types of numbers. And Kauai County got about $24, $25 million. Um, we, we also had to, um, we received a, a large sum, and I can't, I don't know the exact number, but a couple of, um, over 500 million for the state. And part of the reason that we need to go back in mid-June is to deal with some of those, those issues too. So that's a quick wrap up. Sorry for a little tangent on connectivity, but it's been really <laughs> frustrating today. <laughs> right, Hawaiian well, Yeah, just, just generally, what, what uh, the city got a direct allocation of the money that came from the state of Hawaii because of population, because they are a county with over 500,000 people. So one of the other things we wanted to make sure was that the smaller counties, including Maui County, got their share of it. So based on population, 
Maui County is getting 66.6 million. The Big Island actually is getting 80. You kind of shortchange them. They're oh, getting about okay. 80 million. Yeah. And then uh, the county of Kauai is getting 28, about 28 million. That's right, 28 million. Yeah, and the other, the other thing that we were looking at is uh, we know that people are out there hurting. I mean, over the last three months, all of us have been involved in food distributions. We've been involved in a lot of these things just to get things out to people who are in need. And we knew that the counties already had set up a bunch of these programs, um, you know, working with the nonprofit, with MEO, with the Aloha United Way and Maui United Way. And these programs were already set up. So I know that there were some critics um, within the Senate who who thought that we should allocate and start a whole new a whole new program, another state program that probably would have taken two to three months to really stand up. Instead, we, we, we were giving the money to counties. They can funnel that money right directly to the people who need it um, because they've already set up these programs and they can just go ahead and use the money. Uh, the other good thing, as you mentioned, is this is something the mayor can do. And with some, I guess, uh, what is it, discussions with the county? I forget what the, uh, the terminology was. Consultation with the council. Yeah. That's right, consultation with the council. And, and, and I... And I, I don't blame the, the councils for wanting to have some say, but I hope that they keep in mind that this money needs to be spent by the end of the year. Yeah, not not just encumbered. They've got to actually spend it. You know, in some of the programs, I, I mean, the county has some excellent programs in place, you know, and so some of it is reinforcing that. But some of the other things, I mean, for dislocated workers, housing, um, helping with the homeless, they've already stood up some, you know, new homeless shelters very quickly. Um, you know, I have to say I'm really proud of how Maui County has reacted, and uh, this money just reinforces and supports that. So, yeah, you know, you're right. I hope that, you know, the council members and the public also see that, you know, this is the time to just get the the projects going, get the aid out, and help to circulate money in the economy, as well as. The other thing that the legislature did, thank you, uh, Senator Keith Agaron and English, are all of the capital improvement project money uh, that went out the door because that represents jobs. It represents uh, items in our community, whether they're in our schools or highways or other areas that needed to be done. And this brings revenue into the, uh, into the county. It brings uh, jobs for our uh, construction workers and others. And so that's really very important. And I know there's a, a number of them that were at, up at Lahaina Luna and in some in, of the elementary schools in my district. So thank you very much for that. And Senator Baker, another thing the legislature accomplished this month was confirming a large number of nominees to boards and commissions. Can you tell us about that, please? Yeah, I think we had something upwards of 46 uh, nominations to various boards and commissions. And these boards are very important. There are a lot of our licensing board, you know, cosmetology, contractors, mm -hmm. all kinds of, anybody that has to have a professional license has a board attached to it. And so we confirmed mm -hmm. those. In addition, we confirmed uh, a reappointment to the Public Utilities Commission, which is probably one of the more important uh, commissions that we have. And right now, they're struggling with what to do with uh, trying to make sure that one of our companies that services uh, the neighbor islands, Molokai and their neighbor islands to Maui, Molokai and Lanai, uh, to make sure that uh, the groceries get there and other items get picked up and, and brought out and distributed. So we're hoping that they can find a way to help uh, Young Brothers which is the company I'm speaking of, uh, to stay uh, in business because it's a very critical part of our infrastructure. Yeah, it's yeah, not sure. an exaggeration to say that they're critical in serving the neighbor islands, especially smaller islands like Lanai and Molokai. Um, if they reduce the number of, I think they're already talking about reducing the number of trips to Lanai, isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it, it impacts my district the most, right? It, it, Young Brothers is essential for the delivery of food and goods to Molokai and Lanai. And then, you know, for Maui, we have the, the capabilities of airlift, 
We have the capabilities of um, bigger ships coming in. Uh, for Hilo on the Big Island, uh, they rely on Young Brothers for a lot of their, their their food coming in as well, but they also have earlier. So for Molokai and Lanai, it's, it's just, it's crucial that we maintain service. And, um, you know, I don't know how to stress this enough that, you know, uh, unless we find a way to keep them going, we're going to have to find a very quick replacement and very, very swiftly so that Molokai and Lanai do not experience a disruption in food delivery. So we're watching it very carefully and Representative Decoit and I have been uh, bird dogging this for a, a while. Um, you know, it also impacts other industries, right? So uh, cattle industry, um, other movement of vehicles, people buy cars back and forth, movement of goods, but they call less than container loads. So, you know, you're shipping, you, you buy some appliances in Oahu and you ship it to Molokai or Lanai, you, you don't need a whole container. So they put it all together in one container and you pay a fraction of the cost. Um, so again, you know, the impacts would be devastating for Molokai and Lanai. And so we're going to stay on this really as best we can. And well, no, not as best we can. We're going to stay on this uh, yeah. all the way through uh, yeah. to make sure that service is maintained to those islands. For the rest of it, you know, for Kauai, for Hawaii, Maui, there are other alternatives. I mean, we, it, it's dire for Molokai and Lanai, and it's severe for the rest of the islands. Well, we're very fortunate that one of our PUC commissioners who's going to be grappling with this happens to be from Maui and is very concerned. Uh, so I know that they're going to do everything that they can to try to uh, craft favorable regulation that's going to help them out. But I kind of expect that when we go back, uh, whether it's uh, when we go back in, in June or later, that we're going to be looking to try to find some financial resources uh, to help uh, young brothers out. And, and this is not, you know, it's not uh, unprecedented. I mean, no. I remember we bailed out Hawaiian Airlines three times, mm -hmm. right? And we chose not to bail out Aloha Airlines. Um, so, you know, it's not unprecedented that the state steps in to make sure that a critical part of our infrastructure stays in place. But, you know, I think part of that is asking Young Brothers for reform. And I may be asking the PUC to, you know, I don't know what's the word, lessen the regulatory framework, you know, so that uh, they can compete a little bit better. And also we have to understand that, you know, we're requiring them to do routes that are not profitable, that they actually lose money on. And how do we help them to do that? So, you know, Representative Decoit and I had a bill in this year that basically gave them an outright subsidy to cover Molokai and Lanai, recognizing this. And the bill is still in the, in, I think, I think both of them crossed over. I'm not sure. So, uh, but there is a vehicle alive that can deal with this. Yeah, without, before we go further, I think we should all uh, give some thanks to Task Force Maui. I think they just completed their time on the island. I know that they were uh, involved in a lot of the food distributions. I think they were helping at the airports. Yes. And I think they were helping in your region, uh, Kalani, with the, with the checkpoints, right? Yeah, so they're, they're still there. And, you know, thank, thank you for that because there's been a lot of calls I've received a lot of messages and calls from people living in East Maui. And so I just define it, right? East Maui in this discussion goes from uh, Honopo, uh, which is also, that area is also known as Twin Falls for those that don't know Hawaiian name, place names. Uh, Honopo <laughs> all the way, all the way across to about to Ulupalakua. So it's two thirds of the east side and we're dealing with about 5,000 people in all of the villages all the way around. So the National Guard is still there. Um, you know, I'm, the mayor and I have been, I really have to apologize. We've been missing each other because we're both so busy. Uh, but, you know, we do need to discuss uh, what we're, how we're moving ahead. Part of the National Guard's um, work has been to maintain those checkpoints. And they have been, they will continue to do so into the near future. Um, but in the in the time between now and mid mid uh, yeah, we're right there. 
Hi, Kelly. Broadcasting. Good to see you live. Yeah. Um, we're in the in the interim. You know, I'm I'm trying to figure out a a plan for managing traffic in East Mali, and I'm working with the mayor very closely on this. Um, because this is the time to do it. You know, we're not going back to what it was. Our road cannot handle 20,000 cars a day. Uh, the state has, as you know, Gil and Roz, we have put literally tens of millions of dollars a year into keeping that road open. And so we can manage, because of the carrying capacity of the road, we can manage it. Everybody's free to go. That's because we take interstate uh, federal funds for interstate highways. Believe it or not, that's part of the interstate highway system in America. Um, <laughs> we are required to allow everyone to pass, but we can manage it. And we can, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, and this is just thinking out loud, and, you know, that if we put in place a, a reservation system that helps us to say, okay, you know, at certain, you go at a certain time, you go at another time, you go at another time, so that we manage the traffic. Right, and then that helps us to also um, create industries in East Maui. Because what if we create a platform that you go online to make your reservations at the same time you're plotting out what you're going to do in East Maui? You know, I want to do a historical tour of the churches. You can make your reservation there. I want to do a um, uh, experience in uh, Native Hawaiian farm. They can do that. I want to experience a um, a special cacao's uh, horticultural experience, they can do that. Uh, I want to go to Wayanapanapa State Park. You can make a reservation to go down there now so that everything is managed and everybody has a better experience. So these are the things I'm thinking about. These are really broad ideas. And part of it in really looking at how it's been handled in different parts, I'm taking the examples of Haena Point on, on uh, Ka on Kauai. After the floods, you know, they had to. National Guard was there. They had passes, and then they put in place at the at their park a reservation system, um, and everybody had a better experience, right? So we need to have a discussion in in East Maui, and you know, I plan to do that within the next really few weeks. Um, and we, I think we need to come up what I'm going to just term as the general agreements, right? Uh, let's agree that we'll, we'll be kind and work with each other. Let's agree that we want to um, protect our space and protect our side of the island. Uh, we want to create economic development that is uh, fair and equitable to all. Um, and then we agree as a community on this, and we ask people coming in to agree to these general agreements as well. So, you know, because uh, I've looked at things like pledges, right? So the country of Palau, Republic of Palau has a um, Palau pledge that they stamp in your passport. It's beautiful. They make you sign it. And by the way, they charge you $100 when you come in for their green fund. Uh, you sign this pledge, which is a pledge to the children of Palau that you won't, that you'll, you will protect their, their country um, and their space. Uh, and then when you go to the state, so Palau has 17,000 people in 16 states. Uh, each state will charge you to go into various protected areas. And people willingly pay all of this because they've bought into the pledge. We can't quite do that here, but we can reach general agreement and ask others to agree with us. So, you know, I'm sorry I've just gone on about this, but it's been on my mind quite a bit. And I've got a lot of calls and a lot of um, comments and requests from business owners saying in East Maui, you know, when can we open up? Uh, and then others saying, please don't let anybody back in. <laughs> so we have to reconcile all of that. You know, I mean, for those that said, don't let anybody back in, I said, yes, but the people on the other side of the island are saying, don't let you, our, our guys come to Kahului. So, <laughs> you know, I think we, we just need to reach the general agreements and then we can move ahead. So, in anticipation of the National Guard leaving, um, I, I would guess mid mid to late June, um, you know, between within the next week and a half, I think we'll have this community discussion. And Roz and Gil, I mean, you understand that there's some um, technical legal issues that we have to deal with with doing a Zoom 
uh, meeting out there uh, based on some federal laws. So that's what we're trying to figure out as well. So, well, sorry. actually, um, I, I know you made the comment that maybe we can't charge green fees, but uh, you know that's not that's not quite clear yet. And I think the the bill that's being debated and did cross over to the House, so yeah. there, it, I think the bill was going to just do a study. But um, I think right now this makes this gives us an opportunity to actually look at that seriously to see if green fees is one way to address you know, some of the impact of the kind of tourism that we used to have and maybe the kind of tourism that we want to see uh, going forward. I mean, if you saw the uh, the maps that you hear all prepared yes. for the unemployment impact, I mean, your area in Hana, um, Lahaina and South Maui and Wailuku and Kahului were, were the largest um, concentrations of people who were impacted by uh, by this lockdown and closing. And we all know that uh, we probably will not have substantial amount of visitors for um, somewhere from 18 to 24 months or even longer at this point. I think the, uh, the committee on Oahu last week, uh, the COVID committee, uh, got some, got some, uh, some ideas about looking at uh, uh, I think they're calling they're calling it travel bubbles, and what they're talking about is looking at limiting entry right now to nations and I guess I suppose states who have taken uh, certain steps and have have a little bit better control of this virus. Uh, and they're talking about Japan. They're talking about South Korea. They're talking about New Zealand and Australia. Well, and and that's one of the things that we we probably can take a look at, um, but you know, control of our airports is not under state control, and that's one yeah. of our challenges. Yeah. So you know, I'm so glad you talked about the bubbles because we have a a Pacific wide you know um, discussion going on with the leaders of the Pacific Island countries, and the idea is to create a Pacific bubble. So if you look at it. Most of the Pacific Islands have been spared COVID. They have no cases because they shut down very quickly. Cook Islands, Palau, no cases. Uh, Federated States of Micronesia, um, Republic of the Marshall Islands, Tuvalu, all these countries have no cases. They're very scared to open up. And so, you know, we, using technology, right, we, we have a weekly regional leaders discussion and one of the topics is about creating a Pacific bubble, including Hawaii, right? So if we are part of that bubble, which would include Australia and New Zealand, um, if we are part of that bubble, then movement of goods and people within this region would be um, allowed, right? And so I, I'm, I'm having that discussion with the regional leaders. Um, I, we just talked with the, the governor's office um, earlier this week about him coming on one of these meetings uh, to talk to the regional leaders and to see if Hawaii can be a part of this. Because they, they're very, they saw what we were able to do. And if we can maintain that, then we have a, a huge region to work with, including Japan and Korea. Yeah, and I know that the part of what we did in this past session was to allocate about $36 million for thermal testing at the airport. So I think that one of the one of the steps that we're taking it's a tool. It's not it's not the complete solution, but it's one of the things that we're going to have moving forward, and hopefully along with testing. And uh, because uh, you know we are going to see a lot more visitors coming in, and you can already see that people are seem to still want to come here. Yeah, Doc, I'd like to see us have the ability to ask visitors when they come in to bring their test results, you know, show that they've, you know, had a recent test and it's negative, because I think that would give a lot of folks uh, in Hawaii, Maui in particular, because we do get so many visitors, some peace of mind that we're not going to be allowing people back in who are potential carriers. So... Uh, hopefully, we can work with the uh, lieutenant governor and the governor to come up with a, a testing protocol that would 
would work. Yes, and I understand that um, our, rep, our federal representatives have made a request to the FAA to allow for testing of Americans coming into Hawaii on the planes right before they come. So that would help us to create the bubble. And, uh, you know, the idea is that we're so unique. I mean, we're, we're in the middle of the ocean that, yes, we're part of America, part of the United States, but we do need to do testing to protect us and them as they come in because they want to be know that every, everything is protected when they come in as well. Well, I really think that's one of the keys to our rebounding tourism market is we're known as a safe place. We put some measures in place, so we will maintain that moniker and you know really be the health state that others can look up to. So I think we have, uh, we have some work cut out for us, but it seems like we're on the right path. Well, we just have about a minute left. So any final words to folks on Maui who've been uh, staying at home and having so much success keeping the curve down? Well, just generally, it looks like we have some good news coming. I think everyone's confident. And so we're going to have a fairly more larger reopening in the next next week or so, um, except for the bars and large gatherings. And, and, and it looks like we're going to allow businesses to get back in operation. And my my personal favorite is I think the park in my neighborhood will be opening up and I can walk my dog there. I Very thought good. it would be the tattoo parlors, Gil. <laughs> well, yeah, they're very I'll happy. have to talk to parlors can open up. I have to talk to my wife about that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks everyone so much. Oh, go ahead, Senator Baker. I was just going to say before we sign off, I just want to remember a former representative, a colleague of ours, uh, Joe Bertram the Third, who passed away. We had his. Um, celebration of life at one of his favorite beaches in South Maui today. And I just wanted to say to the family, uh, you're in our prayers and in our thoughts. Thank you very much, Senator Baker. And thanks everyone for tuning in. And we'll be back again uh, in about a month. And you can find this whole episode on our Hawaii Senate Facebook page. Mahalo to the crew at Olelo and everyone at Akaku. And we'll see you again next time. Aloha. 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 Aloha.